Oke, okay, kita kembali lagi untuk kesempatan berikutnya di uh, sharing ini langsung dari Omicron ya. Gimana dia menjelaskan untuk cara pengujian diferensial ya. Gimana konvensional atau tradisionalnya dia menggunakan hanya Line, apa diferensial trafo ya hanya threshold timing dan juga karakteristik testing sekarang sudah menjadi sistem base sistem base itu seolah-olah kita memberi gangguan sesungguhnya seperti yang ada di lapangan dan relay ini dia responnya atau actionnya seperti apa just the main difference here is instead of using characteristics and steady state values to test for threshold we're using a power system simulation a power system model where we by placing faults in this power system model we can actually check system requirements as kind of if the fault is inside the zone is the protection tripping if the fault is outside is the protection stable And nah, ini this seperti ini seolah-olah uh, sistem ya ini sebuah sistem dia akan ngirim gangguan relay ini akan uh, ada gangguan terus toll setnya dia ngirim ke relay nanti dia kasih assessment balik This requires a little bit of rethinking how you're testing the relay. So leaving the usual habit and uh, instead of testing for every piece of a characteristic um, in the settings, you rather think about the physical phenomena. So Jadi dengan sure sistem ini bisa mengecek gimana ketika apa namanya physical error ya misalnya tadi nah di sini ada nih ya seperti internal fault simulation satu rating mulai dari in rise overall saturation and sympathetic in rise city star point city error and saturation intinya itu dia ingin melakukan pengujian tetapi harus mempertimbangkan seperti ini tidak karakteristik secara umumnya negatively affect the stability of the protection and therefore we also have to be able to test yes. now while this is really a kind of mind shift for us um, looking into um, using um, using a power system simulation for testing our relays um, think about it as also having some benefits as uh, as I mentioned here is the You don't need settings, and this could also sometimes be a benefit. It's ah, definitely. A, a bedanya sama karakteristik yang biasa dilakukan pada line current differential. Ini dia the tidak perlu nih setting-setting setting dimasukkan ke dalam relay. Jadi and kalau kita nguji, menguji menggunakan uh, alat uji tes so itu kita masukkan settingnya supaya kita tahu bentuk kurva dari slope um, dan sebagainya. Dan masing-masing masing-masing apa namanya? masing-masing relay itu merek tuh punya cara sendiri nih untuk untuk mengukur diferensial karena ini. Nah, kalau dengan cara yang sistem ini kita nggak perlu nih memikirkan setting ini seperti apa untuk dimasukkan. Yang kita perlu cuman kita nanti masukkan tadi kita coba Good. untuk um, injeksi so, nanti mungkin dijelaskan nanti. I'm, I'm sti- I still think it makes sense to in the, a certain point in time to test the characteristic. Uh, my main point here is it's maybe not sufficient enough to only test for so, karakteristik kita butuh. Tapi gimana apa namanya tetap butuh ya seperti ini ya tetap butuh tapi gimana kalau mau diverifikasi Um, the natural differential currents that can occur nah. while there's still not a fault in the system. Kalau so hanya cara konvensional, dia cuma time trick dan karakteristik. Kalau yang lainnya, ini semuanya. Um, it includes the tap changer that might be 
part, might be part of your protected system. Uh, it inc also includes the CT errors, uh, which are nonlinear. And when you add all these currents up, you get this dashed line. And this is at the end the reason why we are shaping our differential curves the way they do. So we have these two kind of slopes uh, for the different yeah. different areas of yeah. the bias current. Jadi nanti prinsipnya seperti itu dilakukan injeksi yang sudah ada nanti ada mungkin ada template-nya ya. Terus kita uji magnet seolah-olah di uji magnetnya. Karena tap changernya, error city-nya itu semuanya harusnya di sekitar non trip. Now but already in there and as I as I said we I want to look into the evolution of transformer protection relays. We we encounter now that curves become um adaptive and often the motivation to have these adaptive curves is to stabilize mm -hmm. to reach a high sensitivity and at the same time stabilize against external faults and what the relay algorithms are actually doing is they simulate an ex uh, so the relays they detect an external fault by seeing an increasing current on the on the on the restraining quantities which is the bias current and um, with that, the relay now detects, um, detects an external fault and it's restraining the characteristic or switching to a second slope better better accommodate for a case when now CT saturation suddenly takes place because due to CT saturation um, it looks to the differential relay like a differential current and usually the trajectory is moving into the tripping zone. Now. While on the one hand side, this is a very clever function, it also has its quirks where you have to think about in terms of sensitivity. As I show here on the right hand, uh, right -hand corner, um, that if we have fault on the bus and an evolving fault into the protected zone, the trajectory looks very similar to what I just showed here for, for saturation. So uh, you want to make sure your protection is actually operating in both conditions correctly, stabilizing or tripping. And with a system-based test, this is very straightforward. Nah, di sini dia seolah-olah ngasih gangguan di busper ya. Harusnya bukan gangguan kavo, tapi ternyata ada uh, ada saturasi di CT-nya sini. Terus gimana nanti dia? Responnya gimana? Ah, ini juga dia bisa melakukan uji in rush resistance ya. Sebenarnya in rush resistance ini bisa diuji secara manual ya. Ada ada memang sampling frekuensi yang dia digunakan. Tapi dipermudah lah mungkin sama training. Again, relay manufacturers are very smart. So what they do is they not only look at harmonic contents, but they look at the waveform and the time signal domain. Uh, so they look at this very characteristic dwell or gap in the inrush current. And by detecting this dwell or, or gap, um, they detect a, an inrush condition. Um, and if we want to test this, this is again a challenge to test uh, as for, for inrush currents. Um, usually we use a, a 50 hertz component and just superimpose some kind of harmonic content but that's not a realistic inrush current anymore. The relay will not be able to uh, uh, detect the inrush on this artificial signal. But with a transient simulation this becomes easy again. Um, but then uh, we're now talking about a transient simulation. It, it sounds complicated. It is usually something simulating the saturation of the transformer um, can be a kind of a challenge uh, but we have to think about what our goal here is uh, and the goal oh. is to commission a protection relay therefore we have to have dia bisa uh, have untuk uh, current. Um, it's not membuat so saturasi um, apa ya mensimulasikan so saturasi transformer bisa dia di juga saturasinya dia butuh saturasinya kurang lebih di so berapa di flux berapa induktasinya berapa, istirisasi berapa? If required for some experts, they can then 
customize this magnetizing curve, but first of all, it's, it's guessed based on nameplate. Now, you might think with these adaptive curves, which are almost settingless, um, why do we need to test them at all? Um, and it's a, it's a good question, I think, uh, but uh, the, the, the devil is in the detail, because when you look into the relays, they, they often take certain settings into account for this inrush um, blocking functionality, which is the, which is the core type and the, and, the, and the vector groups. Because if we, for example, have a a YY binding but, um, and and a three limb transformer, so we don't have uh, the, the flux is not coupled um, anymore. We can see that the inrush currents they are not in phase, um, but as soon as we have a five limb core or a, a delta winding, we can see that the inrush currents are in phase. And some relays take advantage of this and they switch to a different. Let's say let's say they sw they use optimized algorithms in this case. Um, but if this is misconfigured in your relay compared to the transformer you have on site, it is it is more likely that this function is misoperating. And if we're now looking into more medium voltage networks, distribution networks, it is it is also sometimes not uncommon that the transformer is energized um, uh, while the load while the load is switched on. And in that case, we have uh, in a in rush blocking, yeah, so like. Misalnya kita mengenergize trafo awal itu pasti inrasnya akan tinggi. Nah, ini bisa disimulasikan dulu. Jadi waktu inrasis awal trafo itu nggak terjadi ya itu trip gara-gara inras. Jadi tahu dulu nih relnya bisa mampu nggak. Um, but two two more uh, interesting phenomena from my point of view. Dan ini cukup benar ini unblock and unblocking for all during inrush. Jadi waktu ada waktu inrush masukin masukin trafo dan inrush dia harus bisa bedakan mana nih inrush sama gangguan. Kembali. The, the signal starts becoming bipolar suddenly again, yeah, and this is exactly the normal, phenomenon tiba -tiba relays are looking for gangguan. to unblock the inrush Harus bisa uh, or unblock the unblock. differential protection, um, so the differential protection is finally tripping. Nah, harusnya di sisi sini ini waktu inrush so again, dan di sini sini harusnya trip karena memang ada gangguan. Um, Gimana relay ini bisa menangkap you know, apa? Membedakan apa enggak? sequence of events. Same is true for sympathetic inrush. Uh, just very quickly, sympathetic inrush is an issue. Not may, maybe not everybody of you encountered this, but some of our customers did. Uh, issue, had had issues with this. It's usually due to energization of a parallel transformer that is then causing some distortion on the voltage, which is then on the other on the transformer we're actually trying to protect is causing a uh, kind of inrush condition. The challenge here is that this inrush condition often comes uh, to, uh, comes is joined by the load current because our transformer was already energized previously to the parallel transformer, and so um, this is often a challenge for for relays to to have the right sensitivity for for this inrush current as it's slowly only growing. But again, for testing from system perspective, very straightforward. You have two transformers with the inrush simulation activated, and you close the breaker, and voila, you have in, uh, sympathetic inrush. So let's leave the, 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 the transient world of, of transformer protection and just look at a very simple, um, simple principle, which is becoming more and more popular lately, so restricted earth fault protection. Um, the reason for restricted earth fault protection or to apply, apply re uh, restricted earth fault protection for most utilities is to reach a higher sensitivity for internal faults inside the transformer. Um, if we found out during testing with simulations, um, depending on, of course it depends a little bit on the fault resistance, etc., but between 5% to 10% of the transformer, so if we have a fault, a winding to ground fault, starting from the start point at five to ten percent, 
uh, we so can occur that we don't don't trip for faults below these ten percent of the winding, um, which is mm. due to stabilization of the main differential function. So this restricted earth fault yeah, bisa has high sensitivity for internal faults that are uh, gangguan itu memang terjadi, tapi di sepuluh persennya dari titik delta. Jadi delta kan ada titik titiknya terus dia ditanakan kan titik deltanya itu dan sepuluh persennya itu terkadang relay ini susah membedakan ini gangguan RAF atau diferensial biasa ini salah satu simulasinya. And again, and and we we had customers that actually had quite a few misoperations due to RAF protection, which was caused by them. Ah, ini termasuk di dalamnya. By a misinterpretation of the C polarity itu bisa membedakan antara gangguan fasa ke tanah atau belitan itu belitan ke tanah dan belitan ke belitan. Kalau belitan ke tanah itu harusnya RAF. Kalau trafo di dalamnya belitan ke belitan harusnya diferensial. Itu yang harusnya dibedakan ya. Dan dia harus bisa membedakan itu and close to the start point and you can actually see at which point the differentials the normal differential element stops picking and but the RAF protection is starting to pick so um, that's again straightforward to test they, of course it's also possible to do this with turn to turn faults if you for example want to test a negative sequence differential um, we're getting to the last slides I just want to have a want to make a point about the practical consideration uh, for yeah. uh, testing RAF protection. And the challenge here often is either uh, is Whoa. We, we need more currents. We need not six currents, but we need seven currents. Think about three winding transformers. You need even, you need Dia menggunakan dua injektor. And so Karena yang tadi ya, harus melihat gimana sih kerjanya dia bisa membedakan antara yang um, RAF biasa uh, sama yang so, tadi um, untuk diferensial. Nice Jadi di sini kalau kita lihat, the simulation is calculating all the currents instantaneous within the simulation. So it's very easy. Kalau kita lihat di sini bahwa yang ini untuk diferensial, yang um, untuk ya RF enam ini ya enam. And nah, while this is a lot of wiring effort, tapi and wire, um, ada wiring extra ya di sini. If we think a little bit further into the future, and I heard for some oh. Australian utilities, this is already reality today. Um, with simple values, testing of a full transform protection scheme is, has become really easy. Oh, we kalau tadi harus butuh dua injektor, tapi cukup dengan RF. sample value. Think about a three winding transform kalau with RF sebuah IED itu sudah punya enam satu delapan lima puluh, tak perlu injektor langsung pakai simple value. Tapi bayangkan aja berarti dia tidak melalui CT ya, CT-nya itu ya. Jadi pure murni logik di dalamnya. Oke, itu. As I want to show with some of these newer functions and it's definitely not all of the functions because every manufacturer has their own um, innovation. Terima kasih telah mengikuti perkembangan pengujian uh, diferensial trafo ya dari yang konvensional menjadi sistem base. Goodbye.